Hello everyone, Trace here again for episode 3 of 3 in this short mini-series here on supermassive black holes. If you haven't tuned in to the first two episodes, make sure you go back and do that. We have a very special guest this week. She was over on D News recently and we talked to her for just like so much time about so many cool things that we had to share it with you. Her name is Chung Pei Ma. She's a cosmologist and astrophysicist from the University of California, Berkeley. And so far, we've talked about what black holes are, what supermassive black holes are, event horizons, and how they build themselves, and all that fun stuff. But today, we're going to talk about something that just blew my mind. Guys, did you know that the universe is lumpy? I'd have never thought about it that way, but she did, and it's super awesome. We're also going to talk about how the universe might come to a brutal end. Or maybe not. We'll have to stay tuned to find out. You, you put on uh, something on your website that really made me laugh, that you said the universe is lumpy. <laughs> like, can you explain what you mean by the universe being lumpy? Sure, yeah. Um, also, it was much smoother at its youth. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the sort of triumph of modern cosmology that we have come to understand how the universe started out being very smooth, meaning um, the density, you know, how much stuff there is everywhere in space is very, very similar, very, very even. Uni- very even. Think about nice. the that surface of a pond, very flat. I feel comfortable there. Comfortable, yeah. exactly. But you look at our universe right now, yeah. right? This galaxy we found the black hole in, uh, NGC 1600, it's our own Milky Way, for example. It's, it's a clump of stars. It's highly, highly concentrated. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then you look at where these galaxies are in the universe, they're not randomly distributed. I mean, galaxies are very social. Mm-hmm. They're like people. Yeah. They actually like to live in towns and cities. So we see clusters of galaxies. In this case, it's, it's due to gravity. Uh, so they tended to cluster get together in groups, and then you have nothing, and then another cluster, another group, like, like big cities or towns. Um, and in that sense, it's lumpy. Mm-hmm. And how the universe went from smooth to lumpy is one thing we've been trying to understand, compute. We use supercomputers to simulate our observations of galaxies, tell us these patterns. And gravity is the key ingredient for making things lumpy. It seems like we know a lot about the universe that we're looking out at, but how much do we have left to learn? Like, what, what do we got out there? Oh, a huge amount. I mean, we think the universe is infinitely big, actually. Uh, So it really depends on how I wake up each each morning. Some days I'm pretty happy. We actually know some stuff. Right? Dark matter, dark energy, black holes. We can't see them at all, but we are actually talking about how much there is, right? We actually have observations telling us. That's pretty remarkable. We're just sitting on Earth. But like you said, some, you know, some other days I wake up, it's like, goodness, we really don't know. I mean, 96% of the universe is dark. Yeah. And we don't know what dark matter is right now. They're candidates. We know what it can't be. We okay. have ruled out many possibilities. But we think it's some kind of elementary particle, little particles whizzing around. Uh, but we haven't found it yet. Hmm. Okay, so basically 96% of the universe is missing. Yeah. Black holes, you know, how did it become so? Uh, we, we don't know exactly. What gets you the most excited when you wake up and get out there and start looking at the universe? Like, what, what do you get excited about? I think it's the ability of just sitting here, you know, um, and using these telescopes, computers, whatever these gadgets, my friends, our colleagues made, uh, the, you know, state-of-the-art equipment. And we, we look into the night sky. Um, and when we look f- to, at fainter and fainter objects, it's like archaeologists. Uh, we're digging back in time because it takes like, finite time to travel to us. So we are looking at the universe's past as we look more distant. So we are basically taking pictures of you know how what our universe was like in the past. That's quite a luxury um, that many other fields don't have. But by that we can construct a evolutionary. You know we're watching a movie mm-hmm. basically. The ability of us just sitting here uh, and being able to actually understand something fascinating, complicated, or simple, depending on how you put it, like, like black holes, dark matter, and dark energy, and having some confidence because we have mathematical models describing their properties and we can make predictions that are verifiable. Yeah. Um, it's that ability that makes me uh, very excited yeah. and that made me continue yeah. this road. How did you get into studying 
black holes. So, you know, we all grew up watching movies like Interstellar and stuff, and it's in all these books, and I think your audience too, I think we all we were always heard about black holes and, and get fascinated by that. So um, in my career, because black holes are part of galaxies, and I have always studied um, big stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, galaxy formation, the universe, cosmology, what it is made of, what what is its origin, what is its current state, what is the future fate. That's sort of my specialty. Um, so black hole is sort of a part of the, the deal. Mm -hmm. uh, but I became interested in particular about eight years ago because we were doing some supercomputer calculations slamming together galaxies. And in those theoretical calculations, uh, we were making some predictions for properties of these black holes that were interesting. So I started looking at the data to see if they were obeyed by the observed black holes. And at that point, I realized that there were no data mm. uh, for various reasons. These very big black holes are very hard to study. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started to um, actually uh, trying to observe the stars near that to measure their masses. What is it that people kind of get wrong about black holes? You know, what is the like a misconception that people have about them? People have a lot of ideas about black holes because they hear a lot about it, um, and then black holes are often portrayed as, as monsters, as scary, as, as complicated. In fact, mathematically, black holes are extremely simple. They are predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity. It is a solution to his equation, mm -hmm. okay, it's a solution. And a black hole is specified completely by three numbers. Its mass, we talked about that. Uh, its spin, a black hole can spin. It doesn't have to, but it, it can spin. And its electric charge. Mm -hmm. And you can show mathematically that once you specify these three numbers, you're done. Hmm. Another way to put it is two black holes with identical three numbers, they're indistinguishable. Hmm. Imagine how weird this is. I yeah. mean, you and I, We're imagine people, if you could specify their weight, their height, their hair color, whatever, and you complete, then they're indistinguishable. Hmm. How simple that would be. Yeah. Okay, imagine how many numbers you would need to describe a person. Right. Well, we don't know, infinite probably. Yeah. So in that sense, black holes are extremely simple objects. Well, thanks so much for coming and talking to us about your research. And I just have one more thing. You mentioned that part of your job is to is the fate of the universe moving forward. Right. Where what's what's the fate? Where are we going? Boy, big question. <laughs> um, so the fate of the universe depends on how much warmth, how much stuff there is. Uh, uh, the the basic the mass density, how much mass there is within a volume. And we have a pretty good measurement for that by now, based on many, many uh, observations, many teams, many collaborations. And there are sort of two kinds of fates. Okay, we know that our universe currently is expanding. Everybody is moving away from everybody, except for us in Andromeda. When you're very close, <laughs> you're, you're kind of attracting each other. But on very large scales, as if the Milky Way, we smell bad or something. Everybody's staying away from everybody else, expanding. So the key question is, will this expansion eventually slow down due to gravity and will halt and will recollapse? Then the universe will get very, very, very hot yeah. and go become a big crunch. Yeah. Okay, and then another big bang, and then the universe expands, so it will be cyclic yeah. kind of a um, uh, trajectory. The other possibility is it would just expand forever. It doesn't have enough mass to fall back in, on to fall back in. Yeah. So uh, another way to put it, there are sort of two phases. One is uh, inferno, yeah. <laughs> it will come back, uh, end in fire. Yeah. The other one is end in you know uh, despair, yeah. right? And uh, right now it looks like the latter. Oh man. That the universe will expand forever. It just won't and come back again. There won't be not, a big crunch. It won't be a it won't be a big crunch and we'll use up the stars. The universe just get quieter and quieter, older and older and um, just kind of fade man. phase away. Man, that's sad. Which one would you like want to have? I don't know. I don't think I'd like either, either one, but one. I feel like at least a big crunch sounds like a hug. I don't know. Big crunch is better in that you don't have to explain the beginning. Right, yeah. It, just it, keeps does, going. it makes sense yeah, go, that it would do going. this again and again. But now, but in our case, we actually have to then say what happened at the beginning, yeah. but don't ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I won't. So that was it. The whole interview with Chung Pei Ma. I hope you enjoyed it. I really did. I loved getting to talk to her. She was super smart and cool. And she talked so poetically about these things that are just unfathomably massive. 
If you enjoyed this interview and you enjoyed this format, let us know down in the comments because we want to do more of this, but this is because we're excited about it. If you're not that into it, please let us know. If you're super into it, please let us know. If you're indifferent about it, you know what? Let us know too because you're valuable. You can also find us on Twitter. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. And again, if you have any ideas of who we should call and try and get onto D News Plus, let us know that in the comments. Don't forget to check out an Ian O'Neill black hole series that we did recently. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Trace. See you next time on D News Plus.